My name is Sarah, and today's book review is on Undaunted by Cat Balls, sequel to Inhuman. For those of you who don't know, uh, Inhuman was the second book I did on this channel for a review, so we are finally getting to the sequel. Now, for non-spoilers. I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I highly recommend for those who haven't read this, the first book in some time, I highly recommend y'all to read it before jumping into this one because it's been about 2-3 to three years since I read Inhuman and I didn't do that. And when I started reading this book in the very beginning, I was like, do I remember you? So, Undaunted, it takes place 6 months after the events of Inhuman. Yes, I will jump over the whole my issue with the time skip and its time limit that it needs but either way i'm just gonna completely go past that lane plans to keep the deal she made with rafe after you know the battle with chorda and rafe getting infected that if he ever went feral she was to either come hunt him down or hire someone to do it as his last dying wish well after certain stuff happens and lane has the perfect excuse to go with her father across, you know, Titan Wall. Not that Titan. She begins the journey to try to keep the promise and as well as finding a cure for those who are on the other side of the wall who aren't infected or for those who are mammals becoming feral. And let's not forget, ever since Alone for the Ride trying to keep Lane from doing, you know, silly, stupid things that could possibly get her killed. Yeah, that plan didn't work out so well, buddy. Now, I will admit, I had high expectations when I started this book because, you know, <laughs> read the first book quite some time ago and I was like dying for the sequel. But I will admit, I enjoyed it. It was a good read. The wait was worth it. There were times, though, I admit, I will admit that, you know, um, I was like, can we hurry up? We get it. We get it. And the ending, even though it was good, it was a nice way to finish off the series. The way I always solved our final conflict, it felt like, you know, neat a little too neat either way it was a good ending i enjoyed it it was a good read and it was a you know great ending for a duology and that's as far as i can get into non-spoilers because again it's a sequel to a true book series so i really can't get into much detail undaunted by cat falls sequel to inhuman four out of five stars bye non-spoilers <laughs> spoilers so you remember how Elaine had this tiny little device that she always wore and recorded her whole entire adventure from the last book, with, which had amazing battery power? Well, yes, all that footage survived, and you know what? She made a video and posted it online on a mostly teen-visited website. Yes, this video that she made that was supposed to gather support and rally people to help those in the east yeah i didn't have high expectations of that video going viral or people believing that it was real either way she after showing her best friend anna the video she posted online being the reason why she can't return back to the west because that's treason and i guess you know the death sentence so yes off to the east we go now for the main mission well, I would call it actually the leading mission that got us into the main main mission was for Lane and her dad to go to Moline. I that was the city from the last book, the city I forgot about, and start gathering, you know, DNA from other animals to help make the cure. But most of all, to find um, Rafe because apparently he's the only one with tiger DNA. So uh, stuff. You're telling me that there's not one other person infected with tiger DNA? This mission, this, you know, leading up mission leads to the main, main mission, and that's because uh, we don't make it to Moline. We get stopped by Chorda's Queens, the lionesses! Eee! I know I shouldn't be celebrating, but I miss them so much, including Neve, and they play this great big part in this whole book, which I really, really enjoyed. So, apparently, you know, Titan corporation the people that basically run the wall and hire the line guard have been keeping secrets no surprise because you know i do not like this group including the fact that you know they plan to not only expand their territorial claim for the wall but also to start hunting you know ferals including manimals well mm, Apparently, they took Mahari, one of the lionesses, and Charmaine, the lead sister, won't tell Lane where Rave is because her, Daphnita, and Neve know where his location is. 
So again, we get into the main, main part of this book because it's actually cut into two parts. The first half is trying to find Mahari and getting her out. And the rest is this great big expedition to get to rave and try to, you know, develop the cure. Which I will admit, I enjoyed this, just basically everything with the lionesses. So let's go find Mahari! And you know, dad being dad, Lane's dad doesn't want her anywhere near danger, so, and she can't exactly tell him that she can't go back to the west, so when she lands back on Arsenal Island, she makes a deal with the devil, aka Everson's mom, aka Chairman Preji, that woman. If I thought taking care of Davina from Fallen Angels was easy, let me take this woman out. We're talking about the woman that lied about her son saying he can leave the house because he would die because he has a weak immune system to the woman that created this whole virus that caused the AIDS to be sealed off by the wall that she helped build that has her name on it and this whole little private military people, the line guard. We're talking about the devil. Yeah, we're talking about her and Lane making a deal so she can stay on Arsenal. Which is, uh, you remember Gia from the first book? Well, apparently there's other orphans there and they're not treated so well. So, you know, me, I'm going to be sticking stuff in the guards' closets without them knowing what it is. But for Lane, she makes a deal saying she'll take care of the orphans. And the chairman, Prejean, says in return, stay away for Everson. And, you know, she has eyes in the back of her horns, so, you know, she knows things. But hey, now Lane can stay a little bit longer while she tries to figure out where Mahari is. Yay, goals! The one time that I thought was the most stupidest thing in this whole book, I was like, thank God, it's a dream. So, yeah. Even talking with Everson, who gives her a ride after, you know, two minutes of telling her, his mom, that she won't ever see him. Uh, we all know, and Blaine figured this one out real early on, that they were going to use her to lure out Rafe, because they know that he has a thing for her, and he'll come look for her. So, when Lane was asleep, and she woke up, and there was Rafe, I'm like, Rafe, it's a trap! What are you doing here? But again, thank God, it was a dream. But I'm sorry, Lane, when it turned into a nightmare. Either way, I thought that was the most stupidest thing, and I was completely glad that this book, like, haha, tricked you. It's just a dream. Rave isn't here. I was like, oh my God, you just that that was a quick one. Now, while you know Lane is looking for Mahari and taking care of the orphans, she actually does have a moment to talk with Everson after, you know, avoiding Mommy Dearest. And, you know, we realize that he's been getting mail. Everson's been getting mail because Gia, one of the orphans, mentioned how, you know, they were throwing stuff away. And remember how I mentioned that video having no potential? Well, it did have potential for the wrong things because apparently Everson's getting fan mail by a lot of girls. And you know, D Director Sperling does a surprise visit, the woman that's in control on the other side of the wall in the west, and she tells Lane, oh yeah, that video you posted, mm, it had the wrong effect. People want to make sure, you know, the animals and the ferals don't come over the wall, so they're basically giving Titan Corporation full control, meaning extra spending money, more guards, and uh, hey, life is good. Thanks, Lay, for posting that. While Everson's getting spam mailed by these love struck teenage girls, Sperling sends Lane back into the feral zone to gather a list of names of people who aren't infected. But better yet, Lane says, Hey, let me get a recording, try to fix this whole mess, and you know, prevent Titan Corporation from taking control. So, yeah, we have another duty to do on our main, main mission. Now, the real fun begins when Everson after apparently deceiving Lane and by actually knowing where Mahari is, we do bust on Mahari from an uh, underground lab where they're testing the cure on mammals and finding out that the, de the virus can be stopped but the physical changes are still the same. And we, we find out, you know, how if you're not 100% human, you don't have human rights and who more than anyone would rather, like, you know, take out people who don't have 100% DNA. <laughs> um, so Everson works with Lane, with Lane very reluctant, and they bust out Mahari. And we run through a giant maze, which is 
Uh, don't make me go through that house of horrors again. Luckily, Everson knows this, like, cool little lullaby trick. I'm guessing it was what his mom used to tell him when he was stuck in his own maze. Either way, we get out from Arsenal Island with Mahari in tow. Well, she's unconscious because she was gassed. And when the other lionesses see Mahari's all good and stuff, and they um, kind of tell Everson to prove that she's awake or alive by kissing her, that was cute because Neve was all like... And Detmita's like, yeah, hey, you better see if she's still alive. And Tremaine's like, why is this going on right now? And then, you know, Mahari wakes up and she's like, why are you trying to kiss him? And we're like, your sister told him to. They join our group to go find Rave. Yay, adventure time. I'm pretty sure, though, Lane and uh, Everson would be thinking, help. I enjoyed the Linus in this book, especially me, because they were like the comedy relief that we needed. They were the older sisters that we needed to be there for us. They were the guardians to help us get to Rafe and everything. I just love them. And if it weren't for them, we would be at square one and we would have nowhere, no idea what we were doing. But we get to the sad part in this book. I know it's a sad part. When Tremaine, after she and her sisters make a deal with Lane and Everson that they would get them to rape so they can get the blood sample and uh, cure him so they can get a cure for themselves well things go south and she goes feral for like a moment we already know that's gonna happen so she takes care of the situation for herself and she saved the others and it's like Jermaine I was actually hoping the tigresses would get their cures in time but then we find this kid named Aaron lying on the side of the river after, you know, everyone fell out of their boat and Eve won't let go of Lane and holding her like, don't let me go, don't let me go, don't let me drop in the water. And Lane is like, you can just stand. And she's like, I don't want to stand. Either way, we meet this kid named Aaron that's been bitten, so we think he'll start turning. But we also find out he's from a compound named Heartland, that apparently that's where we're going to find Rafe because he's been terrorizing those people for quite some time now. Now, we do find the compound Heartland after an encounter of seeing Rafe at night trying to take Aaron and, you know, the lioness is taking off after them and they believe he's feral. Well, we meet Boone, who is the leader of Heartland after, you know, Lane and, Ever and Everson get caught by watching them do like a pyre and singing a song about Aaron passing on and it's okay to let go. We find out that Rafe is from Heartland and he was kicked out with his sister and her husband. So apparently I forgot about that story in the last book. Either way, um, I thought it was Rafe doing all this killing, but I take it back because when Boone uses uh, Lane as a bait to lure out, you know, Rafe, and it works, we find out the real culprit, a Komodo dragon man who knew Boone and he was like slithering at the name that's Gabe, Rave's brother-in-law, and thank you, Gabe, for taking care of Boone because he was going to use Lane as bait. He was going to kill Rave, and he was going to continue lying about all the people's loved ones that, you know, became infected with, you know, different DNA or living as animals at apparently Camp Echo. Well, they're still alive, but he tells people that they're dead, and the song is basically for the their loved ones who are infected. She get lost and you know keep the lie going again and again and again thank you Gabe for doing your doing a civil service to the people so welcome to Camp Echo where everyone is mammals and we live the day like it's our last because it almost is our last day and they have this amazing game it's on me to play with the lionesses because apparently there's this game called take the teddy and it's fun we're rolling around in mud and they're having a great time yeah i'm i want to play with the lionesses even though they can actually scratch me and i'll have like you know lion dna but hey i'm cool with that by the way aaron's still alive but he got bit by gabe and you remember that uh, when we were supposed to give Rafe the cure after taking his blood? Well, not only did he break the vial to get his blood, because he basically does bring out a good point that I never considered that, you know, they can't get the cure with his DNA, but they could use it on, like, the line guards to make sure that they don't get worried about getting infected while they're clearing out all of the, the mammals in the Veral zone. He also gives the cure to Aaron. So... He got bit again by Gabe, but now he's fine like Mahari. So the fires have stopped and he is good. Lane's not happy, but he is good.
Now, there's this one character I didn't like at all, besides Mommy Dearest, and his name is Captain Rox. I think that's his name, Rox. He was mean, he was rude, he was arrogant, and he was very, you know, not nice to Lane from the very beginning because he thought of her like a thorn in his side, as he said. Well, you know, he his mission was to, you know, get Rafe, get the blood, and we were very concerned about him not letting Rafe go and instead just killing him. Well, him and the line guards find their way to Camp Echo. And with this turn of events, we get this whole new mission to get people from Heartland to understand that, you know, the people, their loved ones aren't dead. that has been Gabe going around, so we have that part of the mission. The other part of the mission is to find Gabe to give them the evidence. At the same time, you know, make sure the line guard doesn't attack Camp Echo. So while Everson and Aaron, newly healed, not infected, Aaron go do team work Heartland. Lane goes to look for Rafe, who took off already, thank God, because, you know, we don't want the line guard finding him. But he also goes to find Gabe. Well, mm, the one, thank you, Gabe, again, for being a good civil servant of the people, because Prox gets his filthy little hands on Rafe while they were looking, while he was looking for Gabe. They get his blood, and while, well, you know, he basically threatens, Lane and his people are beating up Rafe, Gabe shows up and saves the day. Wow! Thank you, Gabe, for not taking out one baddie, but two baddies. Thank you very much. Is it very optimistic of me for saying that I kind of believe that Gabe wasn't totally feral? I mean, he did, um say the name Boone, took care of a grudge that he had, and basically did save Rave and Lane on the side. I mean, it wasn't just me. Either way, Rave keeps the deal that his sister made to Gabe to put him down. After, you know, that whole incident, and we managed to get to the people of Heartland to realize that their loved ones are still alive, and our leader, who is now dead, lied to us. So we had our saddest part in this whole book, but we had the best part in this whole book that I was hoping would come true, and I was not disappointed, people. I was so not disappointed. My ship has sailed. I didn't know it existed until I realized it was being built at the harbor. I saw it completely finished. I watched as the anchor rose from the water and it set sailed into the distance. What am I talking about? I am talking about Everson and Mahari people. I had I was concerned because apparently she did not look like she liked him at all from the first, you know half of the book because you no know, <laughs> experiments but he said he was just taking her blood to help make the cure either way she was like <laughs> human and of course that Mita made uh everson like you know prove it that she's still alive and he kissed her and like she woke up to that well they had this cute little banter especially when they were scolding neve and it was so adorable because they said the same thing a few times and then you know maharu would call him like you know human and then he would call her something else again and they would actually have conversations but then they would banter with one another and they became like you know started to understand one another and i like, became chill and everything and lane was like seeing this happening and then when rafe saw what was going on it's like Mm-hmm. And it was so cute when actually Lane brought the fact that he's saying to Mahari that he's basically a prince in a way, and she's like, really? Well, I am a queen, so. And then, of course, Everson's like, don't say that. Don't call me that. And Mahari's like, why? And then Lane's like, well, that's what um, all the people in the base call him. And she's like, oh, I have heard of this. They mentioned about throwing the prince in the cage with me, and I would have killed him. But, you know, the real reason of why they find out that, you know, the line guard called him Prince and everything, Mahari is like, oh, so that's why they call you Prince, because of your mother who caused this whole incident happening. I'm like, oh. And then when they make this cute little flirtation, you know, before they have to go to Moline and give, you know, with blood sample and everything to Lane's dad, I'm like, oh, especially when they kissed and I'm with Neve on this, I'm like, I didn't know the ship was being built, but I am all for it. <sighs> so we're close to the end of the book, and this is where I felt like the big conflict, the big situation with, you know, Chairman Jean and her whole thing with trying to basically eradicate all the mammals who aren't 100% human and the infected. Well, we arrive at Moline, that for a second I thought was completely abandoned because apparently there's only line guards there ready to ambush 
Lane and the guys. Well, Mommy Deer shows up <laughs> this part of the wall, which is a major surprise to Everson. And she basically, while being recorded, I tell you that, you know, there's no, there will not be a mention of the cure. People will believe that, you know, everything east of the wall should be eradicated and she will remain in con full control and everything because you know her problem but she doesn't want anyone to know what's really going on for a solution and she she is basically the person that's trying to wipe everything under the rug and being in total control now this is where i said that this big conflict between you know, lane and dr preaching this big baddie was kind of taken care of neatly was because not only was the ambush ambushed and taken care of and you know but we also found out barely this woman that I completely forgot from the first book was a spy for director Sperling and been sending in detailed reports of all the stuff that you know doc chairman preachy has been doing you know without anyone knowing against the law blah 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 and managed to get everything on hold and stopped and they also had people to testify against the titan corporation to stop all these plans that the that chairman preaching has been trying to do it feels like our bad guys were taken care of really early i'm like okay this is good everything but i was like expecting a little bit more but hey let's not forget the fact that you know lane has that little device again recording everything she does make another video again with her face on it and it does have the good impact that we need because even director Sperling tells her, yes, this time it was good that people actually not only want to help, but they also want to venture east to see if they can find the, you know, lost loved ones. Basically, the wall was a giant version of what Heartland was, but now people want to, you know, go to the east. And then the book ends basically um, a week later after, you know, people have been giving out the cures to animals. And Lane has been with her dad, Moline, and while Rave has been in Chicago giving out cures. Well, you know, um, Everson is now in control of Titan Corporation after his mother, you know, um, let's just say wasn't mentally stable to stand at her own trial. Dr. Sperling is working with Everson to make things easier. And Anna is her assistant so she can see more of Lane. Well, after Rave shows up with, like, you know, a little glow stick saying that he was now positively proven to be uninfected, Lane and Rave, the long journey that they had from the very beginning of the first book finally comes to an end. And that's the end of my spoiler review. This book, it was a good conclusion to Inhuman, a book that basically introduced me to a world that I wasn't used to. That was like a first, like I would say, apocalyptic dystopian world that had a unique feel to it. And it came to a great conclusion in the second book. Again, there were some things where I'm like, I was like, okay. And again, I made my point about how, how we took care of the big baddie in an, almost like a neat way. Either way, I love the world in this series. Lane, she had her character developments. I remember that in the first book. And she had this determination to try to see if Rave was still uninfected and give him the cure. She had this great determination that I did like. Ever since... He had his moments where I was like, really, are you turning your backs on this? But his moral compass was in the right place. He met Mahari. And so his way, his way of thinking changed where I enjoyed that character development. But as for Ray, I was hoping we would see more of him. And then we got to a part where he was like just being a little mean to Lane. But it was understandable that he felt guilty about certain things. But again, I kind of wish that we had seen more of him. I love Lionesses. I felt sorry about Tremaine. I am so happy for Mahari and Devnita and Neve. I hope y'all have great lives together. For people who like, I would say, apocalyptic um, dystopian world with like a hint of sci-fi, I would say that a hint of sci-fi is because of how all of this stuff happened because of a genetic alteration that became like a virus that caused this whole situation. I say y'all would probably enjoy this book. I recommend picking up Inhuman for those of you who have read Inhuman and have yet to get to Undaunted. Again, I highly recommend for y'all to read the first book before jumping into this one because you will feel a little lost at the beginning. Either way, again, I enjoyed this book. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. And yeah, Undaunted by Cat Boss, sequel to Inhuman. My name is Sarah and bye!